Hello and welcome to the next video in the Efficiency Quad Build. Now this time we are building with 10 inch props, or that's the idea, to give us much more efficient flight times. And that's caused a couple of problems this time around, because trying to find a modern frame that will support 10 inch arms has been a little bit of a challenge. But you can see over my shoulder, hopefully about there, that that's the frame that we're going to use. Now that's a modified version of the BFF frame, the uh, butterfly frame from Flynoceros. And Flynoceros very generously cut me some arms for that, very long arms. So this is a bit of a test. is isn't available yet, but if it works, who knows? There's enough interest, they might start making it as a product. But it does allow us to test the possibilities using modern components. Now, the arms themselves were a little bit longer than I needed. They'll support up to 12 inch props. And for 12 inch props, I really need a motor that's gonna be about 470 kV. But the motors that I have here are these kind of things. Uh, that's one of the ground the props that we're about to test. Uh, 2212, 920 kV motors, the kind of stuff that we had on the old flame wheels. Uh, for those of you that haven't been around long enough and don't know what a flame wheel looks like, this, believe it or not, is what quadcopters used to look like back before everyone got into carbon fiber and the hobby really took off. It is ugly as sin, it weighs a ton, but it was pretty bulletproof and it was one of the few options that we had back when we were building those kind of quadcopters. So in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to weigh all the different components because if you remember last time, what we had to do was to get a good idea of what the overall weight of the model was to understand where the hover point is because once we know where the hover point is, we can get the test rig with the thrust meter and the watt meter and all that goodness and we can stick it on that rig and we can find out how much current is actually being pulled by the motor to produce the amount of thrust needed to hover the model. And as we did in the seven inch build, we figured out that actually you need slightly less than that because you have that forward momentum and we kind of have the prop sitting in static air. However, what we're gonna do is go through all of that stuff. So a big thank you to everybody that got in touch and gave me suggestions for motors. Uh, the motors that we need for these kind of things are not really in vogue. Everyone got completely obsessed with making 2204, 2205, 2206, 2300 kV motors, 2400 kV motors, 2700 kV motors, and everyone kind of forgot about the endurance side of the hobby. So let's hope we start seeing more of these around. I have spoke to a couple of vendors and suppliers and let them know that, you know what? There are other pilots out there who want to fly for more than seven minutes at a time. Anyway, enough of me banging on. Uh, let's get into the detail. And first of all, let me show you slide one. Uh, this is the slide where I'm going to weigh everything. If you are interested in what I'm doing, go and have a look at the previous series. The big thing we're trying to do here is to figure out what everything's going to weigh. So I'm going to put everything on the scales piece by piece and add up the weight. Now I weighed the motor that I've just showed you. That's actually an AGM model. It's a 2213835 kV motor. I think it is. Uh, it's got the Grautner prop on it. Uh, that's a 10 by 5 inch prop. They're pretty heavy motors and they've got big old bolts at the uh, the bottom and a great big whacking nut at the top to keep it all in there. So that, each of those are weighing about 72 grams. If I use the DJI uh, E300 style power plant and that is a, pretty much the same motor, 2212920 kV with a different prop, then I can save myself over five grams in each motor. So it's a little bit lighter there. Battery's gonna weigh about 280 grams. We're gonna come back to the battery because I'm gonna use the same 3,700 milliamp hour 3S because uh, all of this stuff is kind of best on 3S and I'll show you why in a minute. I am gonna be installing iNav into this. So I need to weigh a GPS sensor that's gonna go on the top. That's not too bad. FPV gear, we need a little camera, we need a video transmitter that's gonna go in the back of that fab little frame. The custom frame itself is quite beefy. It's 226 grams, an awful lot of that weight is in those big arms. ESCs weigh about 36 grams. I'm gonna put the ESCs out on the arms. These are the little Holibro Teco numbers. Uh, they're more than capable of running the motors that we're gonna pop on here, uh, but it's the ones that I have handy. Flight controller and video transmitter, 
Uh, these are the Hollybrook components. I'm probably going to go with something else. The reason being is that these are F7 based flight controllers that I have and to run iNav there isn't support right now. So I'm probably going to go for the SpeedyB F4 all-in-one flight controller. That will run iNav right away and it also has all of the pins I need to connect the external GPS and Compass 2. I'm going to put Crossfire in this. Hopefully all you Crossfire fans will be excited about that. Uh, if I'm going to fly for quite a long time, I'm interested in using Crossfire and also if I can get my hands on some 2.4 gig video transmission stuff, sticking that in the back as well. Hopefully that will give me a little bit more range. I've got a Furious FPV 2.4 gig module coming for my Fat Sharks and a couple of cool antennas too. And so we'll have a look at that, but this would work absolutely fine with traditional FPV. And then we've got power wires and cables and other bits and pieces to go on here as well. So I just give myself a nice 60 gram margin of error. So that means that the model's going to weigh about 950, 960 grams all up. So if we divide the 960 grams by the four motors, because it's a quadcopter, we are going to need about 240 grams of thrust to hover or actually to slow fly as we know now. Interestingly, that original flame wheel that we looked at at the top of the video, uh, although it was absolutely hideous, actually weighed 923 grams and a lot of people were flying those flame wheels with very similar motors and props. With the same LiPo that I'm using here, that would mean it would weigh 1.2 kilograms. So we're already quite a bit lighter than a flame wheel. But for me, I'm still a bit disappointed that we are this heavy, but the majority of the weight I'm guessing is coming from the fact we have these bigger motors, we have a nice chunky battery on the bottom, and the frame has to be a little bit beefier to support these longer arms too. So what did we find when I actually went and tested these motors and props? Well, first of all, let me just put up on the left-hand side the comparison. This is what we decided to use for the seven inch prop build that we did last time for an efficiency build and that was giving us about 23 24 minutes of flight time with that 3700 milliamp hour 3s pack we've just been looking at so for comparison let's first of all uh, just show you what the results of the dji e300 motor that's a 2212 920 kv I popped the Grapner prop on it just to see how that works. Uh, the Grapner props were the best props I had back in the day when I was kind of flying the flame wheel. The amps at hover point, about 240 grams, is about 2.3 amps, 28.2 watts, with a maximum thrust of about 747 grams. Grams per watt is about 8.51, so that's significantly better than the 6.57 that we had last time. So much more efficiency. And problem we're here though is that the motors are quite beefy. Uh, they're old motors, they've been around for three, four years, so they're not particularly new. Interestingly, I did put on the E300 propellers, the proper DJI ones that are supposed to go with this motor, uh, just out of interest. Now, these are actually 9.4 by 5 inch, so they're slightly smaller, but the design is dramatically different. So here are the numbers. So at the hover point, uh, slightly above actually, I couldn't get it bang on, at 244 grams of pull, it was only running 2.2 amps, about 26.8 watts. That's really interesting because that's pretty much the same amperage as was being pulled for the hover point by that 7 by 4.5 inch prop back when we did the 7 inch build. Maximum thrust on that is about 762 grams, but this time with that prop we're getting a better efficiency. We're getting a 9.1 grams per watt. So what does that actually mean for the next video where we'll start building this stuff? Well, surprise, surprise, the fact that we're using bigger props with a slower motor means that we have much more efficiency. Now, that shouldn't be a surprise to anyone that watches this channel. I did some testing ages ago that's already proved that. But it means we can hover this much heavier model and pull the same amount of current from the battery. So, thumbs up for that. The other thing it's also identified is the fact that different props are going to give you different results. So be aware of that if you're thinking of building your own quad. Again, this is kind of a test for me. I don't know where this is going to end up. This is just an idea that I've had just to kind of see what the art of the possible is with modern electronics. Well, modern apart from the motors and props anyway. 
But I'd have thought that the Groutner prop would have given similar results, if slightly better, to the DJI prop. But that DJI prop is nicely designed and works very well with that particular motor. But then it should do this part of the same power system. The thrust to weight ratio on this model with the maximum thrust available is going to give us three times the weight available as thrust. That's going to mean that we're hovering about third throttle and it's easily going to be enough to be a nice flyer. It's going to be able to get in and out of trouble without just too much problem. Is it going to be a racing quad? Nope, no, absolutely not, but that's not what this is about. So now we have an idea of how many amps are being pulled, we can do a quick calculation to estimate how long the battery is going to last. The cool thing is, is because it's pulling uh, with this motor and prop combo of the same amperage as it was last time, the calculation is the same. So with that 3700 3S pack, we can't pull all of the power out of that. We can only run about 2960 milliamp hours out of it because we can only run 80% of the capacity out without damaging the pack. So if we divide the available milliamp hours via the amps that we're going to pull, we can see that we're actually going to last about 19.7 minutes. And in fact, in practice, we got a little bit more from that because of the benefit of the fact that we're flying forward and the efficiency with it that we get by not being sat in that static air. But I've had a thought and I've been speaking to the guys at 3DXR that do the lithium iron stuff and they can build a lithium iron pack, which is 3S2P, which will give me the same voltage pretty much as a 3S LiPo pack, but for only slightly more weight will give me a capacity of a whopping 6,000 milliamp hours. Now because the weight's pretty much the same, we can use more or less the same calculations. If we do the same calculation, it works out that it will last 32.7 minutes in flight time. Now, as we know, we actually get a little bit more from that. We get about another 15, 20% flight time because of the fact that we're flying with these props rather than sat on the bench. So we might be knocking on the door of about 35 minutes. Now, I'm excited about that. So join me in the next video where we'll start to put this frame together and we'll start wiring everything up and popping these DJI E300 motors and props on here. And let's see if we're actually going to get that in practice. If you found that video useful or like the content, then please hit the like and subscribe button down below. If you want to go the extra step, you can become a Patreon of the Painless 360 channel and help provide support for what I do here. All the videos created here are put into playlists, so if you're interested in a particular topic, have a look at the playlist, and they all are organised in there to make them easier to use. If you're not sure if there's a video for your particular problem or topic you want to know more about, then add Painless360 to the Google search term that you're interested in, and that should find the video, article, or content about the particular thing that you're interested in having a look at.